Welcome back to Annotating Informational Text. We are five big questions about Washington, D.C. So we did number one. Question number two. So why do some people want the nation's capital to become a state? Oh, that's interesting. I think that's interesting. Don't you find that interesting? I think that's interesting. That's a purple exclamation. Because I didn't know people wanted it to become a state. I don't know if I agree that that's a good idea. For residents of Washington, D.C., it's about fairness. Hmm. The capital is home to nearly 700,000 people. Its population is larger than two states, Wyoming and Vermont. For more than 200 years, D.C. residents have served in the U.S. military and died for their country. Also, people in D.C. pay billions in taxes to the U.S. government each year. But only Americans who live in a state get to elect members of the U.S. Senate. D.C. residents do elect one member to the U.S. House of Representatives, but that person isn't allowed to vote on laws. So basically, the entire Washington, D.C. is not represented in, in, as a U.S. Um, House of Representatives uh, about laws and how they feel about laws, and they're not represented in the Senate. Would that feel fair to you? Yeah. No, te technically D.C. was a uh, part of Maryland, but it's right. no longer considered Maryland. So they're not allowed to vote for Maryland's like Senate or House of Representatives. Apparently not, because it's considered a it's considered a, like a city state kind of, except they don't give it the state qualifications. It sounds like. Yeah, I know. Um, it says. Um. Only Americans who live in a state get elect to elect members of the U.S. Senate. D.C. residents do elect one member to the U.S. House of Representatives. That person isn't allowed to vote on laws. I think that's an important fact. So we're going to do yellow. And we're going to star it. I... Don't know that I knew to that degree, no. All right. Well, you should be learning something new every day. I think sometimes, though, as adults, when you get to be an adult, and you realize you didn't know something, you feel kind of silly, right? Well, I'm very into politics, I pay a lot of attention to that, so I, I absolutely feel very shocked and silly that I did not know that. Anymore. I thought silly was a good way to put it, right? Yes. Because, I mean, just considering, you know, the, the part that I take in politics, my myself personally, Right. I love that you're learning too, Miss K. Me too. Right. Um, that means people who live in D.C. have no say in how their federal tax dollars are spent. They say this is unfair, calling it taxation without representation. It's the same rally cry used by colonists during the American Revolution, 1775 to 1783. No taxation without representation. That's crazy, though, because they are getting taxed and they're not getting represented. Is there anything else in here that we really should annotate? All right, purple. 
Well, here we go. I would agree that that is a very interesting fact. All right, a close... Oh, wait, sorry. Okay, say it one more time. What? I did make a connection. You are right. So I made a connection with um, no taxation without representation. Um, so the rally cry, I made a connection with it because I remember it from uh, history when I read it and when I've taught it. And I think that's a huge connection right there, right? A closer look at Congress. Thanks for pointing that out. Closer look at Congress. Congress is the branch of the U.S. government that writes, debates, and votes on plans for new laws called bills. It has two parts the U.S. Senate, and the U.S. House of Representatives. In the Senate, there are 100 senators. Each senator is elected to a six-year term. Each state elects two senators. They, are the rep they represent the whole state. So the Senate is kind of cool in that it has equal. Every state has the same amount of voting power in the Senate. There are 50 states, 100 senators. Every state gets two people. Whether it's a huge population or it's a teeny population, everybody gets two, okay? Well, what if your state has a huge population? Is it fair that you only have two people representing all of your state and you have a huge population, everybody else has, some other people have teeny populations? Yeah, yeah, fair. Well, yes and no. So what they did, the geniuses that they are, they said, oh, well, in the House of Representatives, we're going to give 435 representatives. 435, holy cats. Each representative is elected to a two-year term. So this one, oh, let me yellow it because I think that's important, right? So these guys have six-year terms. These guys get two-year terms. That's an important fact. Six years, two years. Now, instead of each state getting two, two like the senators, each state elects at least one representative who serves the people in a particular district within a state. States with larger populations have more districts and more representatives. So this one makes everybody even, Stephen. This one makes it so that if you have more people in your state, you get more representatives. Okay? So each state gets at least one. So that probably means that your um, small states like what? Is it new... Wyoming and Vermont are going to only have one voice, but states like California might have 30 voices because California has a lot of people in their population. And think back to your population on your maps and where they were ranked, right? If you're ranked right near the middle, you would have about middle of the road representatives. If you're ranked high, you're going to have probably some of the most representatives right so this kind of evens it out so in one place everybody gets two votes per state in one place if you're the bigger state you get more votes if you're a smaller state you get less votes so it kind of evens it out right okay
Yep, so we had, um, so my friend said, I'm going to highlight this because those are important facts to us, so sorry guys. Um, so my friend said, this is kind of like student council. Student council each gets... I don't remember how to spell council. Um, but each each one gets two representatives per class. Now it works really well because both the fifth and the sixth grade have about the same amount of people in each class, right? They both are around 28, 29, depending on. So everybody gets about equal amount of votes and they have two people representing. If it was, if we had representatives from the third grade class, it would be a little bit different. The third grade class only has 20 people, about 20 kids in each class. Well, do you think they should have the same amount? It is, it is a CIO. Should they have the same amount of votes if there's only 20 i don't know we don't have to worry about it because we don't have third graders on student council but if we did we might want to rethink that right and see if we can make it fair all right moving onward number three what do you need here oh you're fine thank you yep what would it take for the U.S. to add a new state? Both parts of Congress would need to approve the idea. Then the president would need to sign the bill into law. That's how every state other than the original 13 colonies joined the United States. In April, the effort to make Washington, D.C. a state cleared a big hurdle. The House of Representatives voted 216 to 208 in favor of statehood. Holy cats, where have I been? Did you know that? Did you know that they're trying to get Washington, D.C. to be a state? No, I didn't. I figured it'd be a matter of time, but I did not know it was like actually like in the, in the process. Yeah, in the, didn't know that. They said in April. It, I mean, it cleared a big hurdle. That's crazy. Uh, the House of Representatives voted 216 to 208 in favor of statehood. That is insanity. Because how are they going to add a 51st star to the or 51st star to the flag? There's a lot of things that are going to have to change for that. There's good arguments for each side. I well, I don't disagree, but I mean, does that mean we have 102 senators? And then, and then, and then no somebody's going to, a big deal. Like, and then they're going to have to change the numbers, which they always do change the numbers. It's going to be in the, uh, in the thing. It, well, it would be. They absolutely have to add more, you know, another seat in the house. So, I mean. Well, I don't know, because they refigure the house, the house seats all the time. Based off of population when you do the right. census. So they could totally just leave it the same amount there, but Not they're... Not that state, because then they're going to have to consider that specific population, which I'm not so sure, based on what they said, I'm not so sure that population is being considered right now. I don't think it is. They so would definitely yeah. have to add two to the House, though, or Senate, I mean. Uh, Carolyn Maloney, a representative from New York, says the bill honors the most fundamental principle of this nation, that all people have a right to to full and equal representation in their government. So fundamental needs to be orange. I find this so mind boggling. I actually am wondering if you have an extra copy of this. I might have. All right, does, does this mean we'll soon be adding a 50, hey, that was my question. Woo! 
All right. Uh, that would be an interesting fact. Oh, I was wondering that. Wasn't I wondering that? <clears throat> this is my wondering. I'm totally going to put a wondering box right there. All right, so that's my wondering. Not so fast. What? Before the bill can reach the president, it would have to be approved by the Senate. And that isn't expected to happen. Many people of both parts of Congress argue that making D.C. a state would go against the wishes of America's founders. They never wanted the seat of our government to be a state. And they specifically framed the Constitution to say so, said Jody Heiss. He is a representative from Georgia who voted against the bill in April. Now it says, in 1959, Alaska and Hawaii became the 49th and 50th states. So we have not added any states since 1959. 59, 69, 79, 89. 99, 2009, 2019. So over 60 years, we've not added any other states in 60 years. Over 60 years. I think that's a interesting fact, don't you think? All right. Number five. If it became a state... Would Washington, D.C. still be the U.S. capital? Yes, the bill approved by the House of Representatives would keep the part of the city that includes the White House, the U.S. capital, and the major monuments as a federal district. That would still meet the requirements of the Constitution. I would think that Maryland would want their land back. I think if they're going to go this route, Maryland could fight for their land back, don't you think? That would make sense, I think. All right, let's keep going. I keep digress. I keep digressing. That's what I do when I read these things. I get the people, you know. Their votes don't yeah. matter right now. They have no say. Yeah. If it became a state, would Washington D.C. Oh, I just started that. Sorry. Um. That would still meet the requirements of the Constitution. Areas where residents live, as well as businesses, schools, and churches, would become a new state. The state would be called Washington, D.C., but D.C. would stand for Douglas Commonwealth. It would be named after Frederick Douglass, one of the leaders of the movement to end slavery during the 1800s. Holy cats, so they're even renaming D.C. if it, if it becomes a state? Washington, D.C., uh, Douglas Commonwealth. Yeah, I don't know. But they said it would be named after Frederick Douglass. Which, yeah, Douglass Commonwealth, so maybe they're just kind of One of the leaders of the movement. It's blowing my mind. Here. I know, it's like, totally crazy. I'm standing back here and I'm just... Do you like Douglass Commonwealth? Well, let me, let me see if I can find a bio. Hold on. So I'm going to highlight this. The state would be Washington, D.C., but stand for Douglas Commonwealth. Frederick Douglass, one of the leaders of the movement to end slavery in the 1800s. That's crazy, crazy, crazy thoughts. My mind is going... I don't know. I might have enough time to zip it. Let me see. So we're on Frederick... Uh, we're looking at Frederick Douglass because who's Frederick Douglass and it says his journey from captive slave so he used to be a slave is internationally renowned activist Frederick Douglass so he was alive from 1818 
1895, so he was born a little over 200 years ago. 18, 18, 19, 18, 2018. Um, has been a source of inspiration and hope for millions. His brilliant words and brave actions continue to shape the ways that we think about race, democracy, and the meaning of freedom. Slavery and escape. Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey was born into slavery on the eastern shore of Maryland. So he was born in Maryland. In February 1818, he had a difficult family life. He barely knew his mother. She lived on a different plantation, so he was separated from his mom and uh, died when he was a young child. He never discovered the identity of his father, so he didn't know his dad. He was separated from his mom, and his mom died when he was young. When he turned eight years old, his slave owner hired him out to work as a body servant in Baltimore. At early age, Frederick realized there was a connection between literacy. Literacy means the ability to, what does literacy mean? It means the ability to read. So he realized there's a connection between being able to read and freedom. Not allowed to attend school. Back in the day, they didn't let African-American children learn to read or write. So he's not able to attend school. He taught himself to read and write in the streets of Baltimore. At 12, he bought a book called The Columbian Orator. It was a collection of revolutionary speeches, debates, and writings on natural rights. When Frederick was 15, a slave owner sent him back to Eastern Shore at, to labor as a field hand. Field hand means he went out in the fields and he farmed, okay? Frederick rebelled instantly. He educated other slaves, which was illegal, uh, physically fought back against a slave breaker and plotted an unsuccessful escape. Frustrated, his slave owners returned him to Baltimore. This time Frederick met a young free black woman named Anna Murray, who agreed to help him escape. On September 3rd, 1838, he disguised himself as a sailor and boarded a northbound train, using money from Anna to pay for his ticket. In less than 24 hours, Frederick arrived in New York City and declared himself free. He had a successfully escaped from slavery. Um, and it says, after escaping from slavery, Frederick married Anna. They decided that New York City was not a safe place for Frederick to remain as a fugitive. Fugitive means when you escape from jail or you escape from slavery, in this case, you're a fugitive. The, the owners want you back. So they settled in New Bedford, Massachusetts. There they adapted the last name, they adopted the last name of Douglas, and they started their family, which would eventually grow to include five children, Rosetta, Lewis, Frederick, Charles, and Annie. After finding employment as a laborer, Douglas began to attend abolitionist meetings and speak about his experiences in slavery. He soon gained a reputation as an orator, orator is a fancy name for a speaker, and he landed a job as an agent for the Massachusetts Anti-Slavery Society. This job took him on speaking tours across the North and the Midwest. So slavery basically means I get to own you. I get to control everything you do. If you have children, they're my, I get to, they're my slaves. I get to decide if you get to keep your children with you or if I get to sell your children somewhere else. You don't have the right to choose your job. You don't have the right to choose what you eat. You eat what I provide for you. Or if I provide nothing, you eat nothing at all. Slavery is the pit. Yeah, you, you... You're sick or broken? Oh, well. Yep, you go to work anyways. Sick or not, you work. If you cannot earn your pay, we don't really want you around, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
That Fred, Frederick, Frederick Douglass joined? That's insane. But I mean, I can't have. No, you have teachers that teach you how to do that. Imagine having to do all of that on your own. By yourself. Yeah. Like, that's like that's like the worst thing that you can do. Harriet Tubman, is that what it was? Yeah. So, so here's the scoop. So this guy's, and honestly, his life was always at risk, right? Because at any moment, his owner could show back up and say, you're mine. You're coming with me, dude. His owner could show back up and sell him, or his owner could show back up and punish him at any moment. All right, that's all we have time for now. We'll talk to you later. Bye.